Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Very nice to have all of you joining us. We're very pleased with the number of attendees to this session. I will just treat quickly what is on the slide. So for everybody who just joined us, we have adopted the following security measures for this webinar to ensure a smooth and safe experience for all participants. This webinar requires registration for attendance. A password is embedded in the webinar link. Attendees are not allowed to join the webinar before the host. Screen sharing, video, and audio, and audio are disabled for all attendees. Private one-on-one -one -one chat is disabled as well. All communications are only through the Q&A feature and the chat with the panelists only. So you can see that on the top of your screen on the right side. Again, I would like to thank everybody who joined us to this session. We will be starting in one minute from now. This is an interactive session. So basically, you will have a chance for us to hear you out in terms of inputs. So you will be unmuted during the session for us to hear your inputs because we're very keen on having an interactive session and to listen to you, to your concerns, to your insights as well. We're very interested to hear all of that. So we'll be unmuting throughout the session. So um, thank you again, all of you for joining us at this session and we'll be starting our session shortly. All right, so good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ibrahim Mugarbal. I'm the Senior Vice President of Regional Marketing at the Great Place to Work, Middle East. I would like to thank everybody who was able to join us at the session. We hope you're keeping yourself, your families and your teams safe and sound in these difficult times. In a very short period, coronavirus had had a major impact on the world, leaving people everywhere unsure of what comes next. So I would like to ask my colleague to move to the next slide, please. We are a great place to work. We are a global people analytics and employee experience and consulting firm. Our mission, as you can see on the screen, is to build a better world by helping organizations become great places to work for all. So as we move along, we would love to have more and we would like and love to have more of these sessions, more of these webinars, as we're very keen to listen to you to provide our insights as well. So this is the first webinar we're doing from an Asia perspective. But that being said, our objective is to do more of these sessions, to do more of these insights and to listen to you as well. So we would love to hear from you about your inputs, about your insights and about your concerns, your inquiries. So we just need to know that Great Place to Work is here to support you. Next slide, please. As you can see on the map, we operate in over 60 countries around the world and we partner with over 7,000 organizations across all different industries. Our objective is to build stronger cultures and to achieve better business results. Our model is based on 30 years of experience and research representing over 100 million workplace experiences. So that's in, a, let's say, a minute highlighting our best workplace or what is best, best, best is a great place to work all about. Now, moving on to the next slide without any further delay. We have been listening to all of you. We have been listening to all our partners, to all the employees, to all the people. And we understand, sorry, it's the previous slide. So we do understand that this is a time of uncertainty. All the businesses are concerned about the financial performance, about their employee safety, and about their psychological and well-being. And all of that is basically happening in a very short time. 
So now more than ever, all the employees are looking up to their leaders, are looking up to their management, to their teams, to see how can they take actions to support what's happening in this current scenario and how can they support them as people and how can they support the business. So now more than ever, it's very important that you create high trust, high performing, Hi everyone, this is Evelyn from Great Place Singapore. I think, uh, well, this is the real issues of work doing live. I think he's probably hung right over there in Dubai. Uh, let us give a while before a couple of minutes because uh, we are just trying to connect with him. Uh, but maybe in the meanwhile, Dr. Pauline, could you introduce yourself and just uh, share with us your background as well as your insights into this situation? Okay, thank you so much, Evelyn. And thank you so much, Great, great Place to Work for inviting me. I'm Pauline Strawn. I'm a sociologist by training, and I do my research mainly in medical sociology and family. So, and, and currently, I'm dean of students, so I look after the, the students at the Singapore Management University. Um, we are experiencing a generational event, aren't we? Uh, I never imagined three months ago that things would have developed to where it is today. So, in the midst of this global crisis, there's always opportunity, right? Um, here is a chance for us to build a new community and to get innovative, you know, to roll on innovation so that rethink the way we used to function, especially in the workplace, and, you know, imagine, you know, can we, can we evolve from this, emerge from this with better, you know, solutions, with more sustainable um, practices? And will we be able to build community, not just within our own organization, but across organizations and across national boundaries? So that's my uh, vision for us at this point. Um, you know, we can't always focus on the negative. That's when your well-being sinks, right? So there's always a silver light lining in every dark cloud. Let's look for that, that, that spark together. And I think together we can continue to keep, you know, our, our spaces, people around us optimistic because we need to be in our best form when COVID is defeated. Thank you, Evelyn. Thank you, Dr. Pauline, for that introduction. For some reason, I got disconnected. I'm not really sure why. My, uh, my, I don't know what happened, but I'm back online now. Apologies for that. Um, so... Um, Basically, going back to what I was trying to say, um, as I've mentioned, uh, in our Middle East operations, we have we've been trying so much and uh, very hard to support our, uh, our partners. So as I've mentioned, we have launched a COVID-19 survey and some free online training solutions. So uh, we're more than happy to support anyone in the best way possible. So please do connect with us for more information. So in terms of moving on to what are we doing today? So today's webinar, we will be tackling uh, a couple of, uh, of, of uh, topics, a couple of insights. So as you can see on the screen, we will be tackling a range of uh, mental, mental and uh, emo emotional well-being issues that employees may encounter and that how they can differ by family status, age and other demographics. Another perspective is the best practices that organizations and managers can take to support their staff and keep them connected while working remotely. And we would love, as I mentioned in the beginning of the session, we would love to listen to you and to answer your questions. There are many questions that are been raising in your brain and your mind. So we're here to answer that. And then basically some strategies and ideas from the audience as well. So without any further delay, um, I would like to introduce our speakers for today. Uh, we have Dr. Pauline, uh, Pauline Tai Strong, who is the Dean of Students at SMU and a Professor of Sociology School of Social Sciences at SMU. And we also have our colleague from China, uh, Alicia Tang, who is the COO at Great Place to Work Institute, Greater China. Thank you both for joining us this afternoon. Pleasure, 
Thank you. So to start without any further delay, Dr. Pelin, thank you so much for your inputs in the beginning and thank you for highlighting a couple of inputs while I was disconnected. But I would like to start by asking you, in your opinion, what are the likely stressors we suffer from during this period of COVID-19 crisis? Okay, so, so, so if, I, if I ask our audience now to mentally list, you know, things that are bothering them at this point. So these are all business leaders, employees. So I'm sure at the very tip of your, you know, of your very long list is security, right? I think that um, perhaps for most of us, the concern is security about the future, security about our jobs, our businesses, and security about, you know, the stability of everyday life that we know. So if I could sum stresses, you know, that I pen down, you know, into four key points. If we look at individuals and we ask ourselves, you know, what bothers us most about, you know, this period of uncertainty, I think that, you know, disruptions, right? Clearly, disruptions worry us. So disruptions to our normal everyday life and our routines. So most of us are now stuck at home. I mean, we are in Singapore, we have a circuit breaker in place elsewhere in the world. You, you just call a spade a spade, right? A lockdown. So, um, so we are not where we used to be, right? The days, the days just flow from morning to night and the next day, most of the time, I can't remember which day of the week it is. So this bothers us because we, we are creatures of routines and you know, when, when life is disrupted like that suddenly and without warning, uh, it affects our well-being. Um, and of course, we are social beings. So in our everyday life, you know, even if you don't like the people you work with, you're used to being with people. In Singapore here, right, uh, we're used to being in crowded trains, in crowded hawker centres. I love going to malls, you know, push and shove, and, you know, that's part of everyday life. And now, if you stand within one metre of me, both of us could go to jail. <laughs> that is disruption, right? So disruption causes anxieties. Um, and, of course, the disruption is to our sense of security, right? We worry. We worry whether or not, you know, there's going to be an end to this crisis. We watch, you know, CNN every day and we see how bad it is in the US. We watch CNN, you know, and we watch, you know, Nikkei, we watch CNA, and we see that there is no place in the world we can escape. And that, you know, closes the doors on us. And so it makes us feel like, you know, perhaps, you know, this is, uh, is, there light, is, there, is there light at the end of this tunnel? And this explains, I think, much of that hoarding behavior that all of us have witnessed. I mean, here in Singapore, famously, right? They ran out of toilet paper. <laughs> and we, it puzzled all of us, like, of all things, why do you need 20 rolls of toilet paper? Is there some magic, you know, that I don't know about? And then you see that this is repeated globally. Everywhere in the world, they ran out of toilet paper. I mean, you have to see some humor in this, right? So why do we do things like that? Because we are anxious. We're not quite sure what tomorrow would bring. So we have responsibilities to our family, to people who depend on us. And so in the absence of certainty, we do unusual things, which cause more disruption, right, to our environment. And these anxieties, I think, if we speak to, you know, um, especially if you're employers and, you know, if you speak to your employees, certainly many of them, you know, would be worried about job security because the economic outlook is not positive. Uh, we want it to be positive. You know, when I met Alicia, we were, you know, so excited for her because we say China, you know, two months, that's all it takes, okay, and China is ready, ready to come out, and we, we know that we just have to wait our two months, and we will be the next, you know, country to emerge from this. Uh, she has stories to tell us in a little while, so I'll, I'll let her, I will not steal her thunder. Um, and of course, we are dealing with an infectious disease, an infectious disease that many of us have undermined, right? And that's why it spread. We didn't realize that it was so infectious. We didn't realize that it would kill. Um, and so when we look at the statistics globally, it's a stark reminder of how many people have lost their lives. And as the numbers climb, so for those of you who have been tracking numbers as we have here, you know, the numbers in Singapore have been growing. And so every day we look at the numbers. On one hand, you know, there's this morbid curiosity, like, oh, who's number one now? You know, the U.S. is number one. Oh, my goodness. How did they get there so quickly? But then, you know, 
beneath all that, there is also fear that if, if the most powerful nations in the world and the most stable governments and the best healthcare systems in the world and the World Health Organization together could not stop the spread of COVID. Where does that leave us, right? So this fear of risk, health risk, and that certainly tips, you know, tops our you know, list of triggers uh, that would affect our well-being negatively. Thank you, Abraham. No problem at all. These are beautiful insights. Thank you so much, Dr. Pauline. And actually, this raises another question. What, what are, like, what, what do you think, are there any vulnerable group we should be paying attention more to as part of this conversation, as part of this crisis? Um, yes, I'm glad you asked that because I think for, for all of us, the disruption is so personal and, and for those of us who are still blessed, who are blessed to be you know, in full-time employment and we now have to learn how to work from home and for the poor parents, especially mothers of young children, now you have to, you know, this is what, you know, <laughs> Dual work means, right? You have one eye is on the computer, the other eye is on the child jumping around. Okay? And then you have to do their homework, your tutor, your mother, your everything together. So, so we've been so busy, you know, dealing with the crisis, you know, in our own homes um, that sometimes we forget, right? For those of us who, who are blessed to be overloaded at this point. You know, we all complain about it, right? You know, working in the office is a lot easier because, you know, if your door is shut, people don't come in. Now, now nobody knows that I have like five people on different forms of social media trying to get my attention and I can't deal with it all at once and, and I have to go pee. That's the worst thing and nobody understands that, right? But in the business of all this, we forget that there are groups of us, you know, even amongst employed persons within your organizations, who may not have those, the resources that are essential to stay well during periods of shutdown, right? Um, we survive right now. I mean, we have that, I mean, how, how, how crazy is this, right? The world, the world is on shutdown. And yet we have like, you know, over a thousand people, you know, locked on to this webinar and, you know, sharing, sharing our thoughts with each other. That's because we are blessed with technology. Many, in households without technology, this is a real cutoff, right, from the rest of the world. So, so that's one group. Uh, many of us are able to get through this period because in the comfort of our homes, there is space, you know, there's air condition, very important and very, very hot, humid Singapore. But there are many who are now stuck in very, very small homes, which are densely occupied and they don't have that kind of luxury, right? Um, that makes the day pass easier. And of course, for those of us um, who are, you know, working with older adults, I think we have to uh, pay careful attention to their needs because this disruption is much harder on older persons than it is on the younger ones. And, and since we are, you know, dealing with a global audience here, we sometimes forget that, even though we talk about being, an, being a global economy, 24-7 connected, you know, within our own organizations, we now have colleagues who may be in your country, in my country, alone because they are foreigners. And in this lockdown, social integration and connectedness becomes a problem because they are not as well connected. To resources they don't know what to do especially if they are not empowered as empowered you know in the organization and workplace that fear that they would be displaced and that fear that they would not have a job after this and they might have to go home and how to go home with all the flights stopped and you know uh, air travel you know being the way it is now so i guess what what i'm trying to say ibrahim is um in the midst of you know all that all the disruption that we, we are experiencing, uh, we, we need to take stock of people who are not as blessed as we are with the kind of resources that we have, right? And uh, in this period, in this crisis especially, who are not as you know, connected to technology as we are. It is a very lonely world. Thank you, Abraham. 
Thank you, Dr. Pellini, once again. Um, we'll be we'll receiving a lot of questions and a lot of insights, which we're going to be tackling in a minute. In a minute sorry. So uh, basically, I just have one more question before we move to the audience question, if I may. So basically, uh, what do you believe that employers, how can they be supporting the other employees in this time? Okay. The most important thing that employers must do now is to please look after yourself. All right? Because if you don't look after yourself and you don't look after your business, then there will be no business to come back to and, and no office to come back to. So for all employers out there, for all supervisors out there, take time to look after yourself, right? Because when you are in good state of mind, when you are, you know, stable, then you can be, you know, a great leader for those who are under your supervision. Uh, generally, I think that for employees, uh, job stability is the main concern, right? The economic downturn has scared many of us. When we see, you know, so I live in Singapore. Singapore Airlines grounds all its flights. That's pretty scary, right, for the, ma the magnitude of the crisis. So I think it's important for employers to reach out to their employees and let them know, if you can, that their jobs are waiting for them, right? And that they don't have to worry that they will be without a job. And secondly, um, again, this is a situation where the work-life space is merged into one, right? So, so I'm a family sociologist and all my life I've been fighting for work-life balance. Now more than ever, you have to pay attention to work-life balance if you still want, you know, able employees to be able to come straight, you know, into the office, charging into the office, you know, when the green light is turned on. So you've got to look after your staff, make sure that they don't wash out at this point, right? That they don't overwork, that they don't suffer from stress, that they will not be able to recover fully from. So help them to maintain that work-life balance. Be reasonable in the ask that we ask them because a task that could have been done in one hour may take two to three hours now because it's not so simple, you know, as you know, connecting with each other by walking to, to each other's workspace and discuss. You know? And yesterday we had a disruption to our Wi-Fi. All my emails got stuck. And then, and all of us didn't know what to do because it's like all oh, these mails are supposed to be sent in by you know six o'clock, and what's going to happen now? And then, you know, so so things like that, right? So I think for employers and for supervisors, speak for your staff, speak for your staff, you know, help them to hold that line, right, where deadlines are due, and help you know help to broker between them and your clients because at the end of all this, you know, if we all just uh, a little bit more understanding, um, we'll be able to get there faster than if we, you know, give in to our anxieties. And, and I think that this is something that I forget, right? Because I'm so busy trying to learn how to do Zoom, blue jeans and all this. I'm learning so much. It's very tiring. But I forget, and I have to do this, you know, after this, after this webinar, and that is to reach out to my colleagues, and to make sure that just a WhatsApp, you know, just a simple chat to say, are you all right? You know, I care about you. I still remember you and you're very important to me, right? Even though you don't, you know, we are not working directly on something. So I think most important um, for, uh, for supervisors and employers now, this is the time to build trust, right? Because I saw some questions popped in as we were, you know, preparing to, to enter the room. Much. Yeah, and one questions? of them was, how do you make sure that, that the employees are really working and not watching Netflix all the time? You can't, okay? Simple as that, you can't. But what you can do is build a good relationship so that your team will want to root for you and work with you to ensure your success and the success of the organization. And you can only do this through trust. Because if you show your employees that you trust them without, you know, having to look over their shoulders, your employees will reciprocate by giving you their very best. I think we should end there. Thank you, Ibrahim. Thank you so much, Dr. Pauline. And um, I, I, we've been, I mean, 
showered with questions. I mean, there's so many questions in front of me that I would like to ask you, and there are very interesting questions on there. I just wanted to mention to all the attendees and participants, please do share your questions on the Q&A that you can see it on the top right, so everybody can see your questions. And we will be, this is the first webinar of, webinar of many in the future. So we will be uh, uh, scheduling and hosting more webinars. So please stay tuned to that. Um, one of the things I've seen in the questions, what measures can we take to get out of this COVID, uh, COVID stress? Is there anything we can do personally or also can we do professionally with the organization as well? I think mm. that's a very interesting question. I think that, so as a sociologist, uh, we are always, as so so sociologists, look at the root cause of the problem, right? And that, that, that is the most important. So the root cause of the problem is the transmission of this very infectious disease. So therefore, to resolve this, for an infectious disease to be able to control the spread of an infectious disease, we have to work together as a community, right? So to resolve the problem that we are now stuck in, I think rather than look at your organization per se, you need to look beyond that. So it's not the time to be self-centered and, and, and workplace-centered at this point. You have to be, you know, um, you know globally-centered, right? And, and I think what we can do is encourage each other to do the right thing. Follow the rules. Mask up. Stay at home when you're supposed to stay at home. Break the spread of this infection. And when we can control the spread of COVID, I think that <laughs> that will be the key that unlocks the chains that bind us now. Thank you, Abraham. Thank you so much, Dr. Pauline. I'm, I'm, I'm listening to you while reading the other questions that we're receiving as we go along. Um, another question, which is also very interesting. Uh, what do you feel about laying off employees in this period? Excuse me, can you repeat that, Abraham? Sure. So what do you feel about laying off employees in this period? I'm going to ask you to repeat one more time. Sure. What do so I feel the about? Question, the mm. question is about laying off employees. So what's ah, your I see. About? Yes. So, so uh, I think most governments, like my government in Singapore, has um, rolled out many, many, you know, segments of, 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 of help packages, right? And the primary purpose is to support employers so that you do not have to lay off, so that you do not have to let people go. Because if you think about it, if you let them go, this will end, you know, within this year, it has to end, right? If you don't have that pool of loyal, well-trained, employees who can immediately you know jump onto the production line and get your business started you're never going to be able to catch up so do whatever you can to hold on to your employees um, in the inevitable scenario where some have to be let off um, i think that here is again we'll try to look at it from a positive perspective. This is a time for training, upskilling, and you know, forward-looking to see if there is a chance. Take advantage of the various government schemes out there. So in Singapore, we have many. Take advantage, get to know the schemes, take advantage of the schemes, and ride on them. And Turn an adverse, a, 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 you know, turn 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 a crisis into an opportunity, um, and if if you are in the unfortunate situation where you know you need help, ask for it. I think that's very important. Many don't ask because they don't know what you know. They don't even know when to ask and how to ask. I would say that at this point. You know, just ask, right? Ask the nearest person who could give you some information, get help. And um, it is in all our interest to make sure that no one is left behind. Thank you so much, Dr. Pauline, for all these insights. And that's why, as a great place to work, specifically, let's say, in the Middle East, we thought about different ways to engage with businesses and to support businesses. And we thought about launching a COVID-19 survey, 
we also implemented some free online training solutions because as you mentioned correctly this is the right time to be looking at these elements for you to be sustainable as a business and to ensure your business resilience i have a question and i want to thank you first of all dr pauline for all your insights and now i'm going to be moving to our colleague alicia in china um hello alicia how are you today hey Hi everyone. Um, good morning. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, so I'm surviving in Shanghai, China. Well, <laughs> if that's what people is curious about, <laughs> we're okay. Yes. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. So basically, we have been receiving a lot of questions, and I have to apologize because we will not be able to answer all of your questions. You have Understand. beautiful questions, beautiful insights, but unfortunately, right. we don't have the time to be able to accommodate all the questions. Now that being sure. said. Um, we will be able to answer some of them. And actually, before we start with the things you want to talk about, Alicia, I have a question for you from one of the audience. Sure. They mm -hmm. would like to know how to keep employees motivated and engaged during the crisis. Um, today, actually, I br I brought uh, a, a best practice where the company, this company Hulu, is a stream media production company that actually supply a lot of uh, programs for Netflix and also online um, programs. Um, I'm uh, sharing that because uh, um, from just now, I quickly scanned through some of the questions. Actually, it answers a lot in a very specific manner. In the way of five steps, what you can do, they offer recommendations. And uh, the reason why I highlight this company is because they are one of the very um, open companies saying yes to be sharing of all of this without a doubt. They are companies that they are still in, in the process of having some internal issues and they wouldn't want to uh, prematurely uh, sharing too many. However, this is the company who is super willing to and as well, their tips are super useful. That is why I, I select them as a starting point for sharing. Hope it answers a lot of questions. And maybe if you know um, you are inspired and then pop into some other questions, if time allows, I'm also happy to answer those. Right. Thank you so much, Alicia, for that. Um, uh, so we will go ahead and start with your insights about sure. the case study that you have in hand. Thank you so much. Okay, <laughs> not at all. So um, everybody understand, uh, okay, quickly about me uh, in order to make you understand why I'm so cool <laughs> in this scenario. I'm actually born and raised in Taiwan, uh, educated in Taiwan until I'm 25. Uh, then I moved, uh, and then I was assigned by my previous employer, an uh, international brand of, uh, uh, in hospitality to work in Shanghai since 1999. Then uh, I stay here, this part of where working mostly for the corporate roles. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a trainer, but as well, I spent more than 12 years as a senior HR executive in the corporate office uh, capacity. So um, I, uh, I was a client to Great Place to Work and, uh, you know, being, you know, joining as a part of a member here, I'm, I'm sending a message to everybody that it is very important to have a wonderful workplace and that this is when you have something that you cannot expect, like unforeseen situation like what we have today, you have some support mentally or physically uh, on top of your families. So, um, I, um, so which means when the whole thing happened um, in Wuhan, 23rd of January, 2020, when the government announced 100% lockdown, I was actually home in Taiwan, Taipei, um, with the family, you understand why. That's right, uh, one day before Chinese New Year Eve. So when the announcement is out, um, well, please don't think we are used to it. No one is used to this. This is the first time in the modern history over more than 100 years for Chinese that a city is locked down 100%, which means no one can go out, no one can come in. The, re the announcement is uh, released about um, eight hours before. So 10 a.m. is officially locked down, but it only released at 2, 2 a.m. 2 a.m. in the morning that this city will be closed. So um, you can imagine how shocked we all are. I'm very shocked, despite I'm not in that city. I'm not in Wuhan, I'm in Taipei. We are very shocked. 
However, I have to um, also take the opportunity to tell everybody, you know, it's the it's everything that makes uh, the whole uh, scenario possibly working forward. So, which means, as a as a Taiwanese working in China for so many years, as a person with a lot of Chinese friends, every one of us understand this is t definitely a super serious situation. Super, which means in the super serious situation, you use your ear and your eyes, but not your mouth. So don't just grumble like, oh, how come, how come, how come, how come? Because even in China, a lot of people are having some misunderstanding about all oh, Chinese people, Chinese government, very, very demanding. No, it's very unusual. However, we are, we are more used to when things go unusual, it's something you need to pay extra attention and listen to and watch what is happening next. So actually, next to the shutdown of Wuhan, the, it is shutdown of Hubei, and also actually close of the management for every province and city from February until end of March. So um, that's uh, something I can share about how we survive in the process and the balance our life and the work. Uh, some of the family have their revolutions uh, during this period of time, including mine. So my family is now in Harmony, uh, Happy United Family 2.0. And we used to be uh, 1.0 and we have passed through the crisis. So um, I would love to share more about how you actually tackle with your family legacies uh, during the lockdown period in the next chapter. Today, we don't have time for that. Today, we will talk about, so how, what, what things, what are those, those things after lockdown. So here in a quick summary today, COVID-19 caused 50,000 cases and 2.5 thousand deaths, actually almost 2.6 in Wuhan, one single city. I want to show you the number because you can compare this number with the total number in China. They actually occupy more than 70% of the death, of uh, the cases and also death cases. So um, that, that, that is something um, people need to understand. Wuhan, what happened in Wuhan helped Shanghai. Here I also listed Shanghai cases. Shanghai, 622 cases and seven deaths. It's much less than most of the countries in the world. And Shanghai is a city of 2.5 million, uh, sorry, 25 million populations. So there are ways we can survive. Um, then on 4th of April, government announced a national mourning day for the death, which is ever first in the history as well. Um, Wuhan reopens to the world from uh, 0 a.m. Uh, 8th of April, uh, April 2020, after seven, six days of isolation. And uh, this Wuhan situation actually, including China situation, we are able to survive with a lot of uh, preparations from the government side and from the personal side. And uh, we don't have much time to talk all of them, just some quick examples. So in the past few years, everybody understand we are very prepared for the e-commerce, delivery, logistic, and as well, healthcare in China. So in, in the whole period of time, these few things keep uh, our daily routines just with one difference, that you are physically home but every other things you are actually acting upon a, a pretty normal routines, okay? Um, and uh, so, um, so later on, uh, when people have more questions about those, I'm happy to answer, but that's a uh, shift on other than government, what do we do as a business? So here uh, I'm using a WeChat to show to everybody because if you're interested to know more, in terms of details. Alicia, you say there are steps and also tips to share, yes. So if you are also using WeChat as a, one of your social media, you might know WeChat is a combination of WhatsApp, you can text, Instagram, you can put pictures and stories, Twitter, you can quick organize groups and uh, hashtags, Facebook, you can have official accounts, which is what I'm going to introduce now, and the Apple Pay, you can use WeChat to pay. So, um, well, Alicia, quick example, like, 
Yes. Sorry to interrupt you for a minute, um, because I've been, I've been asked that many times. Uh, so basically, yes, uh, everybody will be sharing uh, a recording of the session. So for the people who missed it or who were not able to join from the beginning, we will be sharing a link with all uh, with the recording and all the information that you require after the session. And um, like one of the things, because I'm trying to monitor the, 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 the insights and the comments which we're receiving, everybody is asking how to ensure productivity, how to engage employees so they're really interested to know more and to hear more about uh, these Ray, two elements. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, yes. <laughs> it's coming. Um, okay, so why I need to introduce this official site to all of you because uh, if you have WeChat, if you uh, found Hulu's uh, official site, official accounts, you can, after this session, you can go back to every topic I'm going to share in full details, full details, which means pictures, videos, thousand words, comparisons, stories, everything. It's open for sharing. So that's why I need to tell you, if you are already having your mobile phone, if you have this WeChat, go to search uh, the official account of Hulu, then you can see much more than what I'm going to share next. So anyway, all of the information I'm sharing are mostly posted and published on Hulu's um, um, official account. So let's move on to see some cases. So Hulu is a, is a stream media production company. They actually have a lot of uh, people, um, you know, with the luxury to be able to work from home uh, in February because nobody is allowed to go back to work as we just talked about. The traffic is all blocked. So you can't travel between one, from one province to another. And today in mother world of, uh, world of China, Every office, you have people from every provinces. So everyone, including myself, have people, have friends from Wuhan. So those people definitely cannot come back to work. And uh, some other cities neither because it's all blocked by province. So every province blocked themselves. All right, we have to go back to the previous page. So uh, the slides. So in February, when they are working from home, here I actually post five that you can see from the dates, it is February 2nd and 3rd and 6th and 10th and 13th. So the first point I'm going to share from an employer's point of view is that when the major change out of sudden really need to be introduced, then you keep very close communication with your employees. You don't let them feel very blinded or feel very lost in space, you just start to connect them. And today, the easiest way is through me, like social media. So WeChat official account, I need to offer a little bit more actual explanation on this official account. Official account is not limited to employees. Official account is whoever, either any one of you in this uh, seminar, if you find it, you can follow. Just like Instagram, you can just follow. So if when you follow that, you will see from every article I'm posting here of all of those tips and details. For example, the first one issued on 2nd of February, the topic was, are you ready for home office? So they are not only telling you, okay, you need to have a desk, you need to have an isolated or more quiet corner. You also need to make sure you have uh, you know, all of the uh, facilities, including your computers working, because a lot of people, this is before Chinese New Year, a lot of people left their computer in the office. They don't bring their computer back home. So they are home, but no computers, no desktop. So they, they are telling them, if you have mobile phone, how do you connect? Maybe you should prepare keyboards. You need to prepare some of the earplugs. You need to prepare microphones. You need to have a printer if you need if you uh, your job is related. If you don't, you need to work, you need to install what kind of software from their website in order to work from your own computer. A lot of them are programmers, are designers, scientists, so they need to work on a very uh, serious manner. So um, sorry, I have to go back to that page. 
<laughs> the slides. So the first um, one is talking about. I have two. Yeah, yeah, sorry to interrupt you. So there's two elements because we have like almost 30 minutes left of the session, and I just want right. us to basically uh, cover as much as we can. Um, people are asking actually specifically they want to understand how they can motivate people or employees once the situation is back to normal. I would say how can they how we can encourage them to go back to the office. So uh, can you share some yeah, of the China experience it's, on it's that element? Coming, it's coming afterwards it's coming afterwards but uh, why I'm I want to spend time to share with you all of this despite you might not understand the language but the the formality of keeping everybody together in a frequent and regular f format in a way to offer them not only words but steps to tackle their issues to work from home it's one of the biggest way to support them in distance. Because when you are home, your, your Wi-Fi might not be as good as your offices. Hulu is American company. Their office is installed with VPN. They can go into Netflix and everything, but not at home. So how do you tackle with all of those questions? And while a lot of people say, oh, finally we can work from home. Yeah, it's, it's going to be beautifully, like I see the picture from Instagram, no. A lot of interruptions, unwelcome interruptions, your children, your, your parents, your delivery guys, some of the people doing home construction because they really have nothing else to do. So there are a lot of problem solving that is offered through their social media on a very regular basis. I, I quickly scan through some of the questions here. Actually, all of the answers, I can find them from one of those um, published documents. So um, that's why uh, if you ask me how to support, it is not to talk about dreams. It is talk about actions. And when you are separately in different locations, when you cannot stand next to each other, the best way is to tell them, I'm always here. This is what I know you are facing as a challenge. This is what I know you can try to work. So tell us, how do you do it? So it's not only by the company to tell the employees. A lot of, for example, when there's one issue talking about the, the, the comparison of ideal work from home and the reality work from home, there are people showing their desk. Okay, ideally it is like beautifully, neatly arranged. Reality is everything's messing up. So actually you are having interactions with your colleagues by uploading a lot of real scenarios next to you and share with everybody. They even put some background on the, some theme. For example, if there's a, there's a special day for their program, they put something behind them and everybody put on it and then put, and everybody go live so you can see each other. So it's not, like what we're doing is Zoom, like on, we only see three or four of us. They actually see everyone in a very small square but you can see that, oh, we are all doing this together. And then let me tell you, this is a new format. And the, the, the good news is somebody showing us this new format works very well. And the bad news is we will never, we will never be able to go back to the old format. Let me give you a quick preview of what is so-called post-coronavirus here in China. A lot of people say, well, you're back to normal. No. We are not back to normal. There's no normal ever. We are creating new normals. The new normal is everybody is trying to save because you need security. A lot of people are asking, I'm so, you know, I, I have to handle my anxieties. How? How? As a person, your anxiety comes from external interruptions. That external interruptions is shared by everybody. So the, the anxiety, the deep root of your anxiety is about jobless, less of income. How can we pay my mortgage next month? What about my children's examination? Can she or he still go to the school we plan to this year? Can we still afford it? Is my husband and I going to have an equal income like we planned for our retirement? What about our family's health? All of those is a reason for your anxieties. 
and our experience as like a few months moving forward than a lot of countries, the tips is very brutal. The tip is the better you are prepared for the worst, the less or the better you can control your anxiety. I'm not going to give you beautiful stories because there's no beautiful stories. And uh, we are actually trying to cope with this new normal. This new normal, according to economists, will last for a while and how long while, nobody can predict. So actually the, even the, the officials from government and the economists says, right now our focus is to survive, not to thrive. So if you feel like, oh, my income level is not as equal as last year, same time last year, well, good for you because you still have income. Um, it's, I'm not trying to be <laughs> direct, but when you are better handling with reality, you are better to prepare for tackle with your anxiety or move on forward in this new, new format. 100%, yeah, hundred percent, because yeah. what you're trying to do as well, there's a new reality that you need to accept and digest. So basically, Mm. Whatever we had before was fantastic and was great, but there are new norms, as you have mentioned, there, are, there is a new reality that we need to understand and digest as human beings, as employees, as, as, the, as families, as individuals. So this is something uh, I agree with you 100% in terms of what do we need to do in terms of next steps. Um, I really love what you have mentioned uh, in terms of best practices and some of the experience from China. We are uh, running a bit out of time and there's two elements can, I would like can to I, Can I at least go back to the PowerPoint to sure. quickly tell everybody what is uh, Hulu's support to their employees? Can we go back sure, sure, please. to, right, please? Sure. There, more page, more? Okay, here, sorry, uh, next. Here, okay. Hulu actually have a guide to send to everyone that is work from home. Every icon here, if you clicked it, you can access to materials. So I picked a few for you to see what do they offer to their employees when they are working from home in February. Next, please. So like uh, ergonomics, they have uh, some tips for you how to adjust your position, your posture, computer placement, work area, and lighting. So when you are home, uh, it is very important mentally when we are in the uncertainty of when can we go back to work, it is very important to set up your own frame of work. And when you are in your work zone, you'll feel like, yes, I pick up my momentum right now. And it is also very important for a company to keep your routines. If you have a weekly briefing on Monday morning, then keep doing it. If you need to add in some more meetings for crisis management, then do it. And do it like we're still in the same office. So um, they, they are also sharing moral, uh, moral uh, guides. So what do they, and uh, sorry, this is under the section of embrace fun through, through um, embrace Ooh. fun. This is a big hashtag uh, embrace fun. So, Inside of it, there are ideas for embracing farm from home. Can we move on next? Right, so they have virtual happy hours. And in the next, we don't move on. In the <laughs> later slides, I will show you what are the happy hour, virtual happy hours. They have prepared food, music, and also games in the office. While there are only maybe less than 50% of employees capably to go back to the office. So everybody at home turn on their, their video camera and then applying the same thing at home to celebrate happy hours. So despite the company prepare a lot of food, but people at home can show to them what is my favorite energizing snacks. So there are, might be some of your, you know, Stream food like a fatty, fatty, you know, some chips or whatsoever. You show to people what, and some people show their home specialties. Like, oh, I live somewhere in Guizhou and this is very special there. It's a raw beef, da, 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 da. So it's actually creating a sense that we're still together. And, uh, you know, when you are locked to, fr locked to home, the, the, the best way to show we're together is to see what other people is doing. 100%. 
100%. Right. So they are also and Russians I'm just, in background. In the of time, we still have four minutes, and I just want to mention a couple of things as well before the end of the session, please. Um, uh, we'll definitely be, we'll be holding more sessions and more insight because the number of questions and insights we're receiving are beautiful. And as I've mentioned, this is the webinar number one from Asia, so more to come for sure, 100%. So first of all, I would just like to say thank you to both speakers who have joined us uh, this uh, today, this afternoon, actually. And I would like to say thank you as well for um, Evelyn, who is uh, our uh, managing director for Great Place to Great Place to Work Singapore, um, uh, can I can I ask her to go unmute and just to say a quick word before we wrap up as well, because she's been uh, very supportive in doing and creating and supporting us in doing this webinar. Before I move to the next slides. All right, hi everybody. Um, I just I've been monitoring the questions and the chat that come in. I just thought I'd do a quick summary. I think the key concerns that people have on this call really is two things. If I could summarize, one is how do I maintain productivity of the people? Second question that came in as uh, uh, there's of key concern is how do I maintain engagement of the people during this time? So many of us on this call are business leaders, we're on the HR team, and we want to make sure that uh, work goes on as per normal. Um, I'd like to summarize really what my global CEO, Michael Bush, talked about. Um, and he says in one of our first call globally is, this is, not the, this is not the normal. You've got to expect your people to perform less than 100%. Uh, you've got to expect people to go below 100%. And I think that's something that I want to call out that um, as HR leaders and business leaders, um, our mindset here shouldn't be, how do I ensure I get the full 100% from my people at home? Because um, it's not going to happen when we have to take care of our, our elderly parents, of our young children. Uh, that's not going to be happen. Our first concern really should be about the well-being of our people, the mental well-being, um, you know, the emotional well-being. Um, so this is a point around how we want to embrace their full self. And this is a one of great place to work concept, embracing them for who they are. Um, it's about when you do calls, being okay that uh, on calls, on meeting calls, that uh, we may get interrupted because a child comes and says, I, know, I need you to come and help me. A pet, a, a, a pet dog that comes in that, that needs to be, to be hugged. Um, we have to realize that employees' mental health, is, it comes first right now. Because this is how we build trust. We build trust by demonstrating to the employees that it is not about our business that comes first, but their well-being that comes first. And we believe as we, as we do that, as we take care of the people's well-being, then our business well-being can come after that. Um, so this is the first thing. Some of the practical examples that we have seen our companies do around the world, uh, besides this well-being, is where we are able to, for business, to put some money in the hands of employees so that uh, the employees can take care of the family, the extended family that needs money. Uh, the other bit is really around sharing information very frequently, very transparently, uh, being very open. I tell my clients in Singapore that this is not the time to send just emails to people. Uh, if, our, if our facilities enable us to, using Teams, using Zoom, using Webex, uh, do regular calls, telling them what's happening in the business, uh, how you're responding to the business and to the global conditions, and involving our people to solve whatever problems there might be. Um, it really is in times like this where we share information frequently, regularly, uh, that we build trust. Uh, so I think these are some keys in terms of building productivity, engagement. Uh, so two points. One is let's perhaps ease up on 100% engagement or 100% productivity because um, it is, I think it's a fallacy. I don't think it is uh, practical to believe that. And we need to be okay that people are below 100% uh, because they are managing a crisis. We are all going through a crisis. Secondly, take small steps. I don't think we all have answers answered. Even in China, there are a few steps ahead. But what they're telling us is that, um, Alicia was telling us on the call previously, uh, we expect the moment a lockdown comes, that all of us can go back to the workplace without fear, without anxiety. We are just dealing with physical health right now. After that, the emotional anxiety lingers on. How then do we support that? So I think the faster we come to norms or come to terms, that we're not going back immediately just like that, uh, the better prepared we are. And then to see how can we step by step help people come out of the homes, come out to the workplace when the circuit breaker measures or when the, when the lockdown eases. So I feel that uh, our mindset needs to change from a flip step A, step B to a step gradual approach. I think once we're able to uh, have that kind of mindset, we are then able to adjust our policies and programs that will uh, support that kind of move going ahead. 
So yeah, just, just a summary to uh, looking across the chat groups and the questions that these were the key concerns. I wanted to string them together and to respond to them. Thank you so much, Evelyn, for the summary. And I do believe that the interest and the insight that you have received in the session was outstanding. And this is definitely a, a key element for us to consider because we were starting this webinar, we were not sure about the insight or how people will take it. And I believe the feedback was fantastic. And we would love to hear more uh, uh, from you. So basically, if you look at the slide, you will see that uh, if you can go to www.menti.com and use the code 757486, you will be able to, uh, you will be able to provide your feedback so we can uh, uh, include it in our uh, future sessions as well, key learnings, uh, concerns, inquiry that you might have. So all these inputs that you would love to share with us. I've been receiving as well requests to basically extend the time of the session. I would love to, but um, not for this session. So, but as I've mentioned in the beginning of the call, we're here to support you. Great place to work in all the offices in Singapore, in the Middle East, in any country in the world, in China. So we're here to support you. We're just a one phone call away to support you as a business. And as I've mentioned as well, we're here to basically see how we can uh, do the best in terms of providing you with the rightful insights. So if I move to the next slide, please. So we have a lot of resources which are related to COVID-19. So please do uh, head over to our websites and uh, you can see which country it's uh, basically, you can go to your own country on that website and then choose what you want to do next and what type of resources you would like to have a look at. Again, uh, myself, Evelyn and Alicia and Dr. Pauline, we're here as well to support you if you have any additional questions and inquiries. We did receive many questions that I was not able or we were not able to tackle uh, today on this side. Session. But as I mentioned, we will be considering these insights in our all future webinars. So we are very happy to be seeing all of this feedback and interaction happening today. I would like one more time to, to, to say thank you to all the participants and all the, all, the, all the speakers as well. Thank you so much, Dr. Pauline, for joining us. I really enjoyed listening to you. Uh, thank you so much, Alicia, for sharing, for sharing all this experience and all these inputs from your side as well. And thank you, Evelyn, as well, for providing this top line summary and for helping us putting this together. Um, I would like to thank all the participants one, 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 one more time and to remind them to go to www.menti.com for us to hear from you your inputs and insight about the session. Finally, please do visit our website and for more inquiries or more insight that you'd like to receive, we have a blog session which is filled with a lot of information and insight that you can see useful for your current scenario. So thank you again, everybody, for joining us and have a beautiful day. Bye.